The irony is I wanted to come here for peace and tranquility, have a bit of a meditation. Because <laughs> it really is a lovely spot, a really lovely spot, but not today it ain't. everyone welcome back to the channel a bit overcast today it's supposed to be sunny um, it's gonna be about 27 degrees apparently but we might have a few thunderstorms along the way so yet again I'm out exploring some churches uh, around Wallingham and Titsy and Chelsham so you might get three or four churches in today maybe more so here we are at All Saints Church in Wallingham it's locked at the moment because we're quite early it's only like quarter past ten and the last time I came past here was when I was doing a walk around Wallingham about seven years ago. So uh, it's an interesting for, uh, church with an interesting fact, which we'll show you in a second. This church was originally built in 1250 by Gregory, who was vicar at the time. And although there's been alterations over the years, like they are, most of them, it's mainly 13th century in origin. We're right in the middle of suburbia. We're just outside Wallingham Village, a uh, village in, in uh, Surrey, uh, not far from Croydon. So there's a lot of people walking out and walking their dogs and things. So, uh, yeah, here it is. lovely old yew tree in the churchyard they dated to about 2400 years old 2400 years old I think I've seen a lot of yew trees lately all sort of got relatively in the same area yeah wow very old churchyard here this grave uh, 1664 1664 This is interesting. Churchyard regulations, but there's a map of where all the uh, graves are and what time period they come from. So obviously near the church are all the ancient graves and we go to, yeah, the, uh, the further you go out, you go into the 2000s. Uh, ancient graves around here. Wow. 1910, 1920, there's War Graves Commission here. Uh, it says here, this tree was planted by C.O. Lockton Esquire and W.C. Rutkin Esquire after the signing of the Peace Treaty in 1919. That's to do with the First World War, but that was 1918 when that finished. Yeah, I love this one. Here lieth Chris Hayward. I love Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Chris Hayward and Eliza, Eliza Hayward and Adonai 1710, 1710. So what's interesting about this ancient church, the BBC back in 1950, well before they became the Bias Broadcasting Corporation or the Broadcasting Corporation, they televised the very first church service on television in this very church back in 1950. It 
it's a very overgrown churchyard. I think that's probably on purpose for the habitat or wildlife. Each churchyard seems to be different, doesn't it? Anyway, we can't get inside because we're too early and it's not open today. Uh, I got here on the wrong day. But we're gonna to go to another church, not that far away, on our little adventure today. Let's go. So here we are at St. Leonard's Church in Chelsham. I think it's Chelsham pronounced correctly. There's always someone who will correct me. And uh, yeah, 13th century church, very locked up. Oh, the sun's coming out at last, thank goodness. I saw the weather this morning and it said, you know, all week I'm looking at the weather, it said, oh yeah, bright sun, bright sun, bright sun, 27, 23 degrees, something like that, 27 degrees. Woke up this morning, eating down with rain, but now it's clearing up. But we might have a few thunder showers. I think I mentioned this earlier on, so we'll, we'll see how it all goes, but yeah. St. Leonard's, 13th century, all locked up, gates locked up, you can't park down here or anything. Okay, it's a bit off the beaten track here. Very near the church we did at Farley, the one with the cat in from uh, 2020. That was great. Yeah, there's a lot of Victorian additions to this church, aren't there always? It would be nice if we actually can get into a church today because that's always very interesting. I'm always interested in these um, churches off the beaten track. I know this is not an old door, but look at this. I love it. <laughs> but um, it would be nice. little woodland spot just at the back of the church. Some tree felling going on here, maybe a little bit of coppicing. This is a very bizarre thing to say. I'm just not feeling it with this church. Not from a religious aspect, because I'm not religious. Um, but just the vibe of the place and the energy. As I say, as a dowser, I pick up a lot of earth energy signatures um, around churches and ancient sites, and burial mounds, things like that. Uh, ancient um, uh, Neolithic sites. Uh, a flow of uh, earth energy going through the, the landscape. But aside from that here, because the churchyard's very sp sparse and laid out. I'm just not feeling the vibe of the church. Usually I do. It's a very nice church, nothing wrong with it. I'm just not feeling that energy. Not feeling that energy. That spark, so to speak. With everything locked up as well, with the gates locked up, you can't get to the car park to, just to visit. You have to park at the end of the, end of the driveway. It feels very, not aggressive, that's the wrong word. I think um, not very welcoming. You know? Yeah, maybe it's just me, I don't know. I suppose we've been really lucky with churches lately, or they've all been open, but today it's not happening. Locked. But we've got a couple more to go to, so um, we'll see, we'll see. I've also got lunch, good old pub lunch, at the Barley Mo uh, at Titsy which is one of the highest points on the North Downs, um, which will be lovely. I haven't been there since about 2017 when me and Paul were walking the North Downs way and doing the Surrey section. Um, so yeah, not much else I can really show you at this church because I say it's all locked up. Um, but I'm hopeful of the other places. Before we go, even at the leech gate, there's a chain on there. A chain. I mean, why do you have a chain on the leech gate? 
Oh, well, they can't be very trusting of their uh, congregation. There's a lovely field at the back of the church with some footpaths you can go across. Lovely, lovely, huge field. And they're uh, growing barley by the looks of it. I love seeing all this old flint. So I'm going to have this bit as a little souvenir. I don't normally do souvenirs, but I'm going to take this bit of flint as I leave this lovely field behind. And we're going to head on to the next church, which is one we've been to before. It was closed. I'm hoping it's going to be open. Let's see. This could be the worst vlog I've ever done. I've arrived at the church at Tatfield and there's tree cutting going on. Tree cutting and trimming the lawn. Noise everywhere. What can you do? It's got to be done, isn't it? Or has it? Oh. Well, I did bring you here before, so there's not much else to say unless we can get inside, which I'm going to try and do now. I do like this walled up north porch, north door. Be nice. Um, yeah. Let's have a go. Well, the saving grace is the church is open. You can have to forgive me, you can still, still hear the uh, tree cutting outside and the loud uh, machinery they're using, but I'd rather be inside having a look around the church. It's a lovely church built in 1075. This is what they call a pilgrim church. I think it's on the last video. I'll link these below, by the way. Uh, a pilgrim church is a church where um, worshippers and pilgrims would have stopped out on their way from Winchester to Canterbury to visit the shrine of Thomas a Becket. I have said on many occasions that is a Victorian invention. There's no evidence that pilgrims went from Winchester to Canterbury along the Pilgrim's Way or the North Downs Way as we call it. Um, they could very well have gone from Winchester, they could have gone from Bristol, they could have gone from Yorkshire, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's more of an America, uh, sorry, a, a Victorian myth invented by Martin Tupper. Along these uh, tombs here. Here come Mr. Valentine Hayward of this parish, who died August the 17th, 1731, I think it is. This one's old as well, 16, 1696, 1696, and 1662. The Haywards are a prominent family in these parts. This one much more newer. This is uh, 1837, 1837, and 1822. I've become rather interested in hatchments. There's one up on the wall there, um, if you can see it. Um, yeah, that's a thing I didn't really know much about until recently. These are original Norman wind windows you can see here. Original Norman windows, amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There we go, the font is, the pillar is 15th century. 15th century, the pillar of the font. As with many of these churches, they have great local guides of the history of the, uh, of the church. And uh, usually 
they're like a pound. I don't have a pound on me. I don't carry money. Who carries money? It's such a shame. So I really like to pick one of these up, but um, not if I can't donate. Um, so yeah, St Mary's Chatsfield Guide and History, another time. When a television programme was being filmed here, uh, not that long ago actually, they uncovered uh, accidentally the foundations of a manor house just nearby. Um, previously unknown. So that's it from St Mary's in Tatsfield. It's nice to get inside this ancient church. There's a lovely leaflet down there that shows you all the different timings of when the walls are built, when the windows are there, where there used to be uh, doors. Really, really interesting. A lovely little secluded church. I say if the people weren't here doing the tree felling and the tree surgery, um, we could have had a nice little meditation here, but it ain't going to happen. Although it's gone quite silently. Maybe they're stopping for lunch. Um, so what we're going to do now head just back down the road before lunch and go to St James's Church uh, in Titsy, part of the Titsy estate, um, which is just down the road. It is Victorian. What can you do? But it looks nice, so let's go. Here we are at St James's Church, originally built in 1776 and then rebuilt in 1861. The original church was over at uh, Titsfield Place, over the road. So yeah, 1776 originally but mostly Victorian. Sorry, the church is closed for repairs until further notice. <laughs> Please don't. Is this the worst video I've ever done? <laughs> but look, look at the commanding views once the washout has, uh, has adjusted. Well, you can see the M25 in the background. So, okay. So we can't get in here. Oh, they're Victorian, isn't it? It's Victorian. Yeah. So I think we're going to have lunch at the uh, Barley Mow, up at Titsy. Let's go. So here we are at the Botley Hill Farmhouse Pub. Not the Barley Mow, it's the Botley Hill. Oh, I was calling it Barley Mow, wasn't I, earlier? Got that wrong. There's so many Barley Mow pubs, and I went to one recently, um, around the area. It gets uh, overwhelming. But here we are at Botley Hill uh, for a bit of lunch. Lovely spot. One of the highest points of the North Downs. And, uh, yeah, let's go. This is a quite little corner, isn't it? In the uh, Botley Hill farmhouse, ready to order some uh, lunch. Can't speak too much because there's music playing and I don't want to get a copyright strike.
Okay, that was a lovely meal in the Botley Hill Farmhouse Pub. Really nice, locally sourced beef, I should say, grass-fed beef, very nice. On the way home, I wanted to come back to St Agatha's Church, because I did a video from here from 2020, which I'll link below. And uh, on that occasion, so this is one of the smallest churches in Surrey, one of the smallest churches in Surrey, also the third highest in um, Surrey after St Martha's and probably the one at Cold Harbour I was at recently. So I thought I'd really like to go inside, but guess what? It's still locked. I can show you inside if I can get uh, to the little window here. So yeah, still locked. How disappointing. I mean, if you think, if this church is open, if, it's like the other one I saw recently, this church is open every day for prayer and quiet. Please close the door. Well, it's not because it's closed. What can you do? I really like to have a look inside, but um, yeah, not much to see because it's one of the smallest churches in England. <laughs> So yeah, it's been a very interesting video, this. I hope you've enjoyed it. But my skills in a, as an editor of like 30 years, I think can cobble something together. Especially as an Adobe Premiere editor, which I've been doing for since 2001 um, on various platforms, I think I can sort something out. So if you've enjoyed the video, ah, please like, subscribe, please leave a comment if you want to, to see even if you say, oh Mark, is that the best you can do? Oh dear. Maybe I should do reaction videos. That's where the thousands and thousands and thousands of people get viewership is doing reaction videos from the comfort of their own homes. It's me going out exploring because I love exploring. But um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, hope you're having a lovely day and we'll see you next time. Take care.